All right, so the question of the day is, what do we mean by the term allelic? As a matter of fact, someone posted a comment underneath one of my videos and they say, what is allelic? What do we mean when we were talking about ball python morphs and genetics and we mentioned the term allelic? And let me tell you, when you get into genetics and ball pythons, it can get pretty complicated. I just put out a video recently and I covered some genetics and I thought I simplified it pretty good and people were still saying, hey, I'm kind of lost, I gotta watch that video again. So in this video, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a different approach and I'm gonna tell you what you can expect to get when we breed certain snakes together. Instead of talking all the genetic terminology, let's just go right to the results as far as what we can expect. So before we get into Lelic, let's talk about co-dominant snakes. Uh, this is my bamboo ball python. You've probably seen them before. I've had them in quite a few videos. And a bamboo is a co-dominant morph. And when we talk about morphs, we're talking about uh, the color and pattern, like this snake here, that is genetically transferred to their offspring. So for example, if I took this bamboo and I bred it to any other ball python, 50% of the babies would contain the bamboo genes. So for example, if you bred it to a normal ball python, half the babies would come out normal, half the babies would come out bamboo. And if we're talking about allelic, uh, I actually have a couple allelic snakes in my collection and they are bamboo lessers. And before I show you those allelic combinations, let me show you what a lesser looks like. I actually produced them by breeding this bamboo to a lesser. Let me show you that female lesser. All right, so when we're talking about ball python morphs, we're talking about colors and patterns. The bamboo was basically just a straight, single gene morph uh, as far as the ball python genetics are concerned. This is what we call a lesser. It's just different color and pattern in a ball python mutation. And as a matter of fact, this is just one single gene of lesser. It has nothing else in it. So this is also codominant. And if you bred this snake to a normal or anything else, 50% of the babies would come out with the lesser gene. And, and the, the interesting thing is both the, the bamboo and the lesser both have a super form. So for example, if you, if you took a lesser and you bred it with the lesser, you'd get a super lesser, which has two copies of the gene instead of just one. And if you took the super lesser and you bred it to a normal, all the babies would come out lesser, and it's the same thing with the bamboo. So if you breed bamboo to bamboo, a certain percentage of the babies would be a super bamboo with two copies of the bamboo gene. And it looks completely, the supers usually look completely different than the base morphs. As a matter of fact, the, the supers on both of these snakes look nothing like the base morph with two copies of the gene. But the funny thing is, is when you breed those supers to a normal, 100% of the babies will come out. If you got a super bamboo, they'll all come out bamboo. And as a matter of fact, I've, I've seen a few super bamboos uh, on morph market, and I really haven't seen a whole lot of super bamboos, which is kind of interesting. You'd think they'd be more popular because when you breed a super bamboo to a normal, all the the babies come out bamboo and from a breeders perspective it can kind of be a double-edged sword because if you're breeding to uh, say you know, there's a lot of like super pastels uh, there's a lot of different supers so for example if you had a super pastel and you bred it to something 100% of the babies are going to have the pastel well maybe you don't necessarily want the pastel in 100% of your babies so so it, it really depends what you're shooting for if you're shooting for a whole rainbow of different morphs and you don't necessarily want the you know you don't want like all lessers in your your clutch then I can see you could go with you know just like a lesser with with some other genes in it instead of using the super and I know a lot of people especially when they're breeding like a three gene animal to a to a two gene animal and they get a whole rainbow of colors a lot of people will actually shy away from the supers because they don't want that gene through all their babies they want a whole variety 
of different snakes. <laughs> this guy's going on my shirt. They want a whole variety of different snakes instead of you know every single snake in the whole clutch having a certain gene. Uh, it kind of, uh, I guess it kind of limits you to some point, but you know, if you're breeding like a super lesser to a normal, it actually gives you more a powerful breeder because all the babies will be lesser and they'll be actually worth more than if you were to breed something like just this lesser to a normal and you get half the babies coming out lesser. So the interesting thing is, is if you breed a lesser to a bamboo, a certain percent of the babies will have one copy of the lesser and one copy of the bamboo. And let me show you those snakes. All right, so take a look at these snakes. These are both lesser bamboos. And this, this one in my left hand is a male. This one in my right hand is a female. I definitely don't want to get them mixed up. And the way I remember them is I put the female in my right hand because girls are always right, right? <laughs> so I definitely don't want to get them. If I got them mixed up, I'd have to actually go back and probe them and figure out which one is which. And the interesting thing is, is I was kind of looking at these a little bit closer and the female has a lot more yellow up here on the top versus the male. The male doesn't quite have as much yellow as the female, if you can see that. It's really interesting that the female actually came out with a little bit more yellow. But the interesting thing is both of these snakes are allelic combinations. So when we're talking about allelic, this has, both of these have one copy of the lesser gene, one copy of the bamboo gene. So, so essentially what happens is if, if I bred this snake to a normal, it's, it, 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 it acts like a super, which is really interesting. And not all combinations are allelic, only certain combinations are and and really the, the only ones that are really allelic uh, are the snakes that are in the blue-eyed leucistic complex which we call it the blue-eyed leucistic complex because it's a white snake with blue eyes and it's pretty much the same with all of them you can have two copies of the gene uh, of like a lesser would be a super lesser or you could have one copy of the lesser gene and another copy of another gene that is allelic to the lesser. So these happen to be lesser bamboos. You can have uh, lesser Russos or lesser Mojaves, and they're pretty much all the same. They're white snakes with blue eyes, which is kind of interesting how these guys work. I don't know if I could put one of these around my neck or put them both around my neck. I don't know. They're kind of squirming around, kind of going crazy. It seems like if I put them around my neck, they're a little bit tamer as long as I don't mix up which is which. So, so essentially what happens in an allelic combination, if I bred this snake to a normal, it acts like a super where instead of 100% of the babies being like a bamboo, 100% of the babies being lesser, now with an allelic combination, 50% of the babies will be bamboo, 50% will be lesser, and zero will be normal, which is, which is even more powerful than than your super. So the allelic combinations have two different genes that when they're combined together they act like a super and there's not a whole I would say there's not a whole bunch of allelic combinations that are out there I would say everything in the blue-eyed leucistic complex and then there's some stuff uh, just off the top of my head there's there's like the um, the highways and the freeways where you have the gravel and yellow belly or the the gravel uh, uh, the asphalt and the yellow belly or or the spark in the yellow belly you, you have all those snakes that if so for example if you had a gravel yellow belly and you bred it to a normal half the babies will come out gravel half the babies will come out yellow belly and you'll have no normals which is which is pretty interesting and it's it's kind of I would say it's kind of a genetic anomaly having uh, an allelic combination you don't find them very often and when you do find them uh, it's it, let me tell you it's a really powerful breeder it's even more powerful 
then uh, <laughs> it's even more powerful than a super. And now I think I mixed up these and <laughs> I might have to figure out which one's which. I know the, the female has a little bit more yellow, so, so it's a little bit easier to figure out. So that is basically what an allelic combination is. Hopefully you can, you can follow what I'm saying and you can kind of figure out based on the breeding, you know, we can talk about, you know, the alleles and the chromosomes and heterozygous, homozygous, and all that stuff that confuses everybody, or you can just kind of focus on you know what am I gonna get if I breed this snake and you know if you have an allelic combination you you basically if you bred it to a normal you get no normals which is really the the power of an allelic combination so that is pretty much it hopefully you followed along hopefully you captured the information that I'm trying to give in genetics let me tell you genetics is extremely difficult I'm no geneticist and I'm just kind of dabbling in it you know because I'm in ball pythons and let me tell you if, if you get into ball pythons the genetics can be overwhelming at first there is a lot of genetics in the field of ball pythons and let me tell you it's a crash course in genetics getting into snakes because it's pretty much unlike any other you know any other animal I would say because so so for example if you bred you know like a like a poodle with a labrador and you get a labradoodle if, if you actually bred that labradoodle to something else you'd never get the labrador and the poodle back out of the labradoodle it's completely opposite with ball pythons so if you have you know five genes in here you breed this back to a normal you're going to get all those five genes out in their pure form you know in the hatchlings which is pretty amazing I, I don't really Really know of any other animal where you can breed you know a mixed breed back to a normal and get all the pure genes back out of it and that is the power of the genetics in ball pythons it is pretty amazing and let me tell you it's it's pretty fascinating and it can really lead to some deep discussions in genetics so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you next time